As we told you in last week's episode of Market Journal, southern rust has been confirmed in Nebraska. The number of counties with the disease has now quickly moved into the double digits. Earlier this week, we talked with Nebraska Extension plant pathologist Tamara jackson Zims near Scribner to learn about the importance of accurately diagnosing and, if necessary, treating southern rust. I wanted to make sure everyone was aware that we have indeed confirmed southern rust in several Nebraska counties. And it's not to say that it's widespread and certainly not to cause panic for anyone, but we definitely want to monitor it very closely and especially for spread to new areas and for increased severity in some fields. Is this early in the year for the disease? It is. It's actually the earliest that we've seen it in a number of years, and that's alarming for a couple of reasons. One especially is that we have so much late planted corn that's very early in development, making it especially more vulnerable to this disease. Any other risk factors or high probability areas? Well, in, in particular, it's mainly the, the uh, early planted corn that's a little earlier in development. So we have a lot longer window of grain fill ahead of us. And so just keep in mind, southern rusk is a very aggressive pathogen, and this is one that can increase very rapidly in humid conditions like we're having. And so we certainly want to monitor that. Okay, what does this mean for treatment options? Well, there's a few things to keep in mind. And so southern rust can be managed very well with the foliar fungicide. But if you're hoping to manage it with a single foliar fungicide application, it's important to know that fungicides that have already been made can wear off in approximately 21 days, just about three weeks. And it can take up to several weeks for southern rust to develop and become widespread. And so if a fungicide hasn't been applied yet, I would recommend holding off and waiting and watching and seeing where it develops, monitoring especially your own fields. And also to uh, keep in mind the fields that were treated weeks ago, or we have to watch them closely too. How hard is it to tell the difference between common rust and southern rust? It, it can be quite tricky. And so we talk about things like looking at spore color. We, we talk about southern rust being orange to tan and common rust being reddish or brown. But realistically, unless they're side by side, it is extremely difficult. And even for us, I'm not comfortable talking about it or differentiating it until I see it under the microscope. And so people send in samples to get confirmation and then we'll light the counties up accordingly. Let's move into northern corn leaf blight. How widespread is it in Nebraska? Well, northern corn leaf blight, we've been talking about it for a number of weeks now. It hasn't gone away. And in many locations, it has actually kind of slowed down or stalled out as temperatures has become hot. Now, as uh, temperatures become hot, it slows down. It does not kill it. And so as temperatures cool off again later, we could see it ramp back up again. Is that another one where you need to be careful about when you're treating? A absolutely. And so uh, as temperatures increase and slow down northern corn leaf blight, the, uh, the other side of that is that we see gray leaf spots starting to crank up because it really also likes the humid weather and warm conditions. Does the fungicide application for northern corn leaf blight also cover gray leaf spot though? Yes, it does. And so most of our foliar fungicides, especially ones that have two modes of action with both a strobal urine and a triazole have some curative activity to stop early infections and also the strobal urine to stop infections on uninfected leaves for a few weeks up to about 21 days. How do you know if it's valuable enough to treat? And so a few risk factors I would look for. And so if you have a sensitive or susceptible hybrid, that means you have the potential for developing more severe disease. I would also look at the stage of the crop. And so earlier stages, especially it's, if it's at right around tasseling or shortly thereafter, that's pretty early. And so you have a lot of grain fill left. Other risk factors for gray leaf spot and northern corn leaf blight would be continuous corn or no-till. And so you have higher risk in those situations. Tamara says it can be difficult to identify some of these diseases. She therefore advises producers to submit samples for an accurate diagnosis.